Welcome to the HP PalmTop Tube channel. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to open your HP 200 or 100 Alex PalmTop in order to gain access to the motherboard for repairs or upgrades. I'm not going to show the whole disassembly of the whole system because it's, it's quite difficult and complicated and you will likely fail in you know reassembling it completely again for your first time so you'll probably end up damaging your palm top. The bottom half though is very easy to open and access so let's get started. So the tools we will need to open the bottom half of this palm top is one pair of small fine pliers, a screwdriver with a T4 hexagonal bit which is the one on the left here sticking out. Something to put your screws and little bits into and a guitar pick or a similar tool. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to back up your RAM drive, your C drive, uh, because we're going to have to take out all the batteries, including the backup battery. Uh, to do this and your RAM drive will be wiped clean when we do this so make sure that you copy everything you need from your C RAM drive to a compact flash or PCMCIA card uh, before you attempt this. So let's start. First thing of course is open the batteries, the battery compartment and take out the batteries. And next we will want to take off the infrared little cover and take out the backup battery tray and now we're ready to open the palm top. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get these four little rubber feet off. The screws are actually underneath these four little feet and the easiest way to do that is to use these small pliers just be careful to grasp the rubber and not make any scratches on the on the case of the palm top. You can very easily just pull them out and it doesn't even damage the rubber itself. Okay, so once that's done, we are going to take out the four screws. Okay. There we go. That's all four screws out. And now we use our guitar pick. Now, some people prefer to start on the back where the batteries are. Uh, Personally, I would not recommend this because it is possible to accidentally break this thin piece of plastic here. So I always recommend to start from the front where the PCMCIA slider is. So basically hold the palm top upside down with the PCMCIA slider corner closest and insert your pick and just open this up. It should open up really easily and then slide your pick to the middle of the palm top, twist it a little bit so it opens and then use your pick on the remaining corner here and it just snaps open like that. Be very careful that you don't damage this part here with your pick. So only use the pick here, slide it to the middle and then on the corner but do not use it here because you might damage the keyboard flat cable underneath and then you basically do the same on the back corners you just insert open up I mean this one opens up really easy some some are a bit harder but it's it's not a hard thing to do and then we can simply take off the bottom part sometimes when you're opening a palm top like this you might 
take off the lid but there will be something holding it down and if you look through the side the battery can, uh, compartment here these connectors that connect to your battery they have these little rods here and they have a sort of a little bridge where they snap into so these two pieces basically connect to the motherboard to these two sockets here and sometimes they can be stuck in there quite hard so what you'll have to do is open up your palm top like that a little bit and then you can use your small pliers to just grab hold of those wires and carefully pull them out of those sockets and then the lid will come off so there we go so this is the palm top the motherboard is basically loose you don't need to do anything to take it out there's no screws or anything the only thing you have to do is remove the flat cable that goes to the LCD panel the screen uh, this is a, basically a small ZIF zero insertion for socket so you just basically carefully open it and just pull the cable out like that carefully be very careful with this cable because if you damage it you're, you're in for a lot of problems you're gonna have to replace the screen probably um, so now we can just take the motherboard off like that okay so this is a close-up of the motherboard um, let's have a look what's on here so on the right side here we have the PCMCIA slot connector here is the Intel Hornet SOC uh, system on a chip which contains basically the majority of a PC the processor, the CPU, the graphics card, the CGA graphics card, the serial port uh, and the necessary logic to connect to the LCD panel uh, as well as various other components that are required to make a complete system uh, this is the little door under which the backup battery sits. So just a, lit a small lithium coin cell. This is the uh, infrared uh, LED that sends the infrared uh, serial data to another machine. Uh, and right next to it is the infrared receiver sensor. Um, next to that we have the nine pins of the, well there are ten in fact, but only nine are used, of the serial port connector. And besides that we have the, uh, show this, we have the barrel connector for external power input. Um, and the rest of the board is populated with various components. Fortunately, none of these have electrolytic capacitors, so you don't have to worry about these systems um, getting leaks from capacitors. You can just leave the board as it is, and these things are really built to last. Um, I haven't seen any that have failed or that have had any kind of leakage uh, from anything other than batteries. So let's turn it over and have a look at the bottom. On the bottom of the panel uh, is the memory. There are two chips here. I think one is a RAM chip, this one. And the other one I think is a ROM chip. The ROM chip contains the operating system and the various built-in applications. And this would be a one megabyte uh, RAM chip because this motherboard comes from a one megabyte HP 200LX machine. Um, what's interesting to note is this little row of pads here, of solder pads. Um, these on some systems contain a little connector uh, or header uh, onto which you can put memory upgrade boards. I'll show you one of those boards here. Uh, this is one of the boards. It has these pins here on the side that connect to that header and basically go on there this is a one megabyte expansion board so if I were to install it on the system it would become a two megabyte HP 200 LX if I were to install this board on a two megabyte motherboard which has two megabytes on board it would become a three megabyte system 
So on motherboards like these which don't have that header socket on them it is possible to actually install one although you do need a very fine tip solder iron and a very steady hand because it's very small these pads and here is for example a header I'll just lay that on there see this has all the little holes where the pins of the upgrade board go in and these need to be soldered onto those pads on the motherboard usually one megabyte 200 LX systems except for this one the later ones basically have that header already installed um, it's you know if, if you have the header already installed you're in luck because you can simply buy one of these RAM upgrade boards and install it and add you know up to four or eight megabytes you know depending on what you can find they are very rare and very difficult to find though if you're looking for one please contact me in the comments and I might be able to help you then finally there is another very important part on this motherboard sitting right here this is a crystal which generates the clock signal that the Hornet SOC runs at. Um, originally, stock machines have 16 megahertz crystals. Um, that 16 megahertz gets divided into two and becomes eight megahertz. And that eight megahertz will be the clock, uh, the clock for your CPU. If you uh, would like to upgrade your machine like this with a double speed upgrade, please contact me in the comments and I might be able to help you out finding one of these crystals because they are very rare to find. So that was my overview of the 200LX motherboard. I hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. Okay, so now we're going to reassemble the palm top. So this is basically what we did in part one but just the reverse process so first of all we want to put the motherboard back on the shell and we simply do that by guiding these two pins next to the keyboard flat cable which connects here to the motherboard just put the motherboard on top of those two pins and let it fall down and it's in place. Next we want to connect back the uh, LCD panel connector. Now a lot of people make the mistake of jamming this in like that in the, in the top and then they with a lot of stress or force try to close this zip socket and then they end up damaging it. It's very important that you lift it up a little bit and the cable goes underneath not on top and then you can just close it without any force at all, just like that. Also be careful with this little barrel connector for your mains power here. You need to kind of manipulate that in place so it sits there correctly. So now we can simply close the machine again by putting the bottom lid back. Um, a few things to look out for, PCMCIA mechanism the ejection mechanism here the actual sliding connector might fall off and it's a bit tricky to put it back what you do is you just use your thumb on this part here and just pull it open a little bit and then you place the sliding connector here make sure that this notch is behind this gray plastic part and then just close it and now it should be back in place and working. Also make sure that your two battery connectors here, these two bridges which contain the two connections to the battery, that these are properly seated inside these two plastic bridges. So now we can just take the bottom part of the palm top and carefully place it back on top and just pull it, push everything down, make sure everything is properly seated, that the barrel connector is properly seated and it 
should just snap close like that and now we can simply take our little screws just gonna put them on the table just put them back screw them back in Don't put too much force on them, just just a small amount is enough. Okay, and now we can simply push these little rubber feet back into the holes. Here we go. Okay. Always make sure that your PCMCIA sliding mechanism works. And put back. Oh, forgot the battery container. Backup battery container. And close it up like that. We put our back batteries back. and start up the palm top. Here we go. And there you are. Okay, so this was my tutorial on how to open your bottom part of your HP 200LX in order to access the motherboard. Um, I hope you find it useful. And if you have any technical questions, please ask them in the comments and I'll try to answer to the best of my knowledge. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell icon to get notifications about future videos.